It's like, what, five in the morning? And I typically get up and pray, but like today, I ain't been able to. Like, I just don't feel like talking to anybody, doing anything. And I think it's because I'm, I go back to church for the first time in like, since all this story happened, my last time being at church was my birthday week, my birthday December fifteenth, and then shortly after, all this stuff started transpiring. Like I always used to joke with my wife and tell her I I hated my birthday because bad stuff always happened around that time. But it's like turning out to be so true, man. Cause like. If you read my book, a lot of the stuff that happened, it was like around my birthday or winter time or about to be that time of, of, of the year. And so I used to always joke with my wife and tell her, like, I don't like my birthday because something bad always happened. And 2017, that was like the one of the worst years of my life, like that entire year. When I write about that year in this book too, you will see why. But like this uh December twenty seventeen, it was my birthday. I, I was living in Charleston and then the another week and a half went by and my son was born and he died in my arms. So it's like it's always something around my birthday. And then this last year, twenty twenty one. I celebrated my birthday. I was at church. Everything was cool that week. Next week, your dad's in the hospital. Next week, we don't think he's going to make it. So I went to St. Louis. Christmas week, I was in St. Louis. I'm like, okay, he cool. I prayed for him. He looked fine. Regardless of what the nurse is telling me right now, I'm trusting God. I get back to St. Louis. His wife texting me. I may get back to Texas. His wife texting me, texting us. Pop's not doing good again. He's in the worst condition. I get back to St. Louis. And no, I'll give, I was in Texas and they like, his, his, uh, now his kidneys not functioning right. His lungs not working right. His stomach not working no more. And I knew that was it. Like, when they told me his stomach wasn't working anymore, I broke down that night. Like, that was the hardest I cried. Because I already knew it was a wrap. I'm like, everybody, they all been texting me like, oh, he cool, he cool. We gonna pray. We gonna keep trying. But it's like, I knew in my heart. That was it, man. When they told me his stomach stopped working, bro, I knew it was a wrap, man. I knew it. And I'm like, I already knew him. I told myself it was over, but I still was speaking out. You know, we just still don't trust God, this and that, yada, yada, yada. But I already knew, man. I knew it was over. And so, so my wife, like, so what we going to do? Like, do I need to get you a plane ticket? Like, because I'm like, man, I got these kids. We going back and forth to Texas and St. Louis. That ain't no short drive. That's 10 hours on the map. With me driving and stopping for gas and my kids, it's like 11 hours. And so, I, I was going on the right, the next day, like everything cool, blah, blah, blah. Noon that, that next day, Thursday. Thursday that afternoon, my sister called me. She said, he gone. That's the first two words she told my little sister. She had been up there in St. Louis still with him. She was like, he's gone. I got my stuff. I went home. I flew home. Like, I did like 90 up the highway home. I just walked through my door. My kids, normally, they be like, when I come in the door, they be like, daddy. They be happy and smiling. They knew it. So, I, I came through the door. I, I just... Drop my stuff. I just walked straight to the back of the apartment. And I went in my room, shut the door, stood against the wall, slid down, and just cried my eyes out. My, that was my dog. My daddy was my best friend. 
And can't nobody, can't too many people say that. Can't too many black men say that. That man was the best man. The best any person I ever knew. The funniest. The most protecting and loving. That was my dog, man. My, I, like, I, for him to raise three kids on his own with no financial help. And to put us all through high school. We all graduated on time. I went to college. My sisters went to college. Regardless of whether or not they finished, I got my degree. My little sister has her pharmaceutical license. My sister has a great job here down here in Texas. She has a house. She has a nice Mercedes. Like, we all doing extremely well. And can't nobody say it. Can't no black. It's a lot of single black mothers that can't even get their kids to that level. Like, my daddy did it with all three of us by himself. Now, granted, my grandparents helped him along the way, you know, because those, my granny was like my second mom, my granddad, he's like, he was like there, like, so that's why I always say, like, I don't know how not to be a good dad, because my daddy had my granddaddy, and I had my daddy, because he saw that example in his life, and I saw that example in my life, it's, it's a real man raised real man. I say I put it like that. So it's like I, I don't know how not to be a good father. I don't know how not to be a good husband. I've seen it all my life. That's all my dad wanted was to have his wife and kids and take care of his family. But if you read book one, you'll see why things didn't turn out that way with his first marriage. But my dad remarried. He got married again. He always wanted to do things the right way. He was always bragging about his kids. He was always talking to other family members, friends about his kids, how good they were doing, how how good we thriving down here in Texas, how glad he was we all made it out of St. Louis alive, especially me, graduating high school with 4.0, never having been to jail a day in my life. Like, he was on me, especially because he knew me being a boy, a man, turning into a man. Like, he didn't want me... To follow the crowd, follow what everybody else was doing in my community, in my neighborhoods, what he used to, he didn't want me following the life that he used to live. Because he used to be a street dude. So if you, if you a street dude and you grow up and your son becomes a street dude, you failed him. There ain't nothing cool, there ain't nothing to brag about, you failed your son. I don't care how nice it looks, how, how cool you think it is. If you a street guy, or if you used to be one, and your son grew up to be the exact same way, you failed him, man. You failed him. My dad didn't do that for me or my sisters. But it's like, it, today is supposed to be my first time going back to church since all this happened because we've been back and forth in and out of town. But it's like, I don't want to because it's like, not, my, not any issues with God, but I don't, I don't want it to feel like, you know, it's that's it, it's over. Like, I left him in the past, you know. I don't want to move on with life because it feel like I'm I'm leaving him behind. It's kind of hard today, man. I ain't think it would be like this. I ain't think it would feel like this, but it's kind of hard because I don't want to continue on like nothing happened. Like, and I don't, I don't want the pity smiles and back rubs and I don't want but I I don't want that but at the same time I don't want people to just act like it never happened you know like laughing and smile I don't I don't feel like laughing either like like you got your highs and your lows but it I don't know it's hard to explain like but thank y'all for watching I'm gonna cut the video right here it's just how I'm feeling today my thoughts and feelings today God bless